An independent High Court inquiry has accused former High Court Judge Dyson Hayden of sexually harassing six young women. Peter Wilkinson, a disturbing expose by Kate McClymont in the Herald. Firstly, our thoughts are with the alleged victims. They're in a dreadful situation, aren't they? They, they certainly are, because what happens, there's going to be a lot of media activity around this and a lot of chit chat around the law, law courts, which, which where rumours spread like wildfire all the time. So, so in that situation, there's going to be rumours and media activity regardless of what the women do. And so they are in the invidious position where they really need to continue to speak or at least have a statement that defines them. Because without that, rumour and innu innuendo is going to fill the space. Nature hates a vacuum is the saying. And that's the situation here. So, and Kate McClymont, I'm pretty certain, will have counselled the women on this. So huge credit to the women for speaking out. Very brave to come forward. Now, as a High Court judge, Hayden was meant to be a man of the highest moral standing beyond reproach, yet it's alleged he hid behind the wigging gown for years. Allegedly, it was an open secret. What does this say about the legal profession? Where things are hidden, bad things happen. That's just the nature of, it seems to be the nature of society. And the issue of transparency in the judiciary has been a conversation that's gone on for decades. The problem we've got in Australia is there's a um, propensity for judges to hide behind their position and for barristers for that matter. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I said to a barrister, we were, we were having a conversation about the wig and the gown on the way to court. And I said, why do you bother? Because, you, you know, you've already got the status of the position. And he said, because, and he puffed up a little bit, and he said, because it gives us authority. The trouble is, it, it makes, it might make a bad person appear slightly less bad, but it doesn't make a good person look better. And it's a huge discredit to the legal fraternity that this, if it's true, if this was hidden for so long, so what does the legal profession need to do to ensure that this never happens again? Well, the first thing the legal profession has to do is, is itself apologise and agree that something is seriously wrong, that this was common knowledge, if it's true, common knowledge throughout the legal profession uh, for many, many years. Once they've done that, they can begin a process of repairing it, and it's certainly going to involve whistleblowing protections, transparency and a very clearly understood code of conduct and a culture change. And the culture change is going to be the hard, the hard thing to manage here. In order to create a culture change, whether it's in the legal courts or in hospitals with specialists who are too arrogant or wherever it's occurring, there's a long process and some of it's a generational change. And it needs a strong code of conduct constantly enforced, championed by a number of people to drive it through. Hayden's issued a statement through his lawyers. What have you made of that statement? It was a sort of a Clayton's apology. That the lawyer, one, one phrase says, our client says that if any conduct of his has caused offence. It's sort of the Harvey Weinstein apology. And Here's the difficulty I have with it. Harvey, the Harvey Weinstein affair started in October 2017. So if Justice Hayden, if this is true, Justice Hayden has had all that time to think about what happens when he gets exposed. And the best he can do is put out this. He's really got two options. If he's innocent, he can come out, he's got, he can either say nothing or he can say a little bit, which is what is here, or he can come out really strongly and protest furiously about his innocence. And of those three choices, the middle one is the worst one. Saying nothing is an option. He can keep his dignity and say that the courts will deal with, will deal with this. Or he can come out and say, oh, I am, this is an outrageous set of allegations. None of it occurred, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and keep saying it because eventually some people, or maybe a lot of people, will believe him. On the other hand, if he's guilty 
from now on, it's going to be death by a thousand cuts because the media and the legal profession, the media rapidly and the legal profession slowly will crucify him. And so the advice his lawyers should be giving him is apologize profusely and say, it was complete, what I have done is completely wrong. It may be that that will impact on the court processes and how he's dealt with by the courts, but his reputation, his family's reputation, his children's reputation and his grandchildren's reputation relies on what he does next. Well, he can apologise until he's blue in the face, but surely there's no coming back from that. Well, that's, that's true. There's no coming back from being a pedophile. There's no coming back from being a murderer. There's no coming back from being a Harvey Weinstein type fully. But you can come back partially and there'll be people who, some people who will forgive you. I mean, in a situation like that, you can't unscramble the egg with a, a genuine apology that is completely genuine and is enunciated in a way that people understand that it's genuine is that some people, maybe a large number of people, will, will forgive you over time. Well, they are uh, shocking allegations. The strength of the women involved to come forward uh, needs to be commended. Uh, and again, our thoughts are with them. Peter Wilkinson, thank you.